From the Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock, this is Capital View with your host, Jesse Tenor. Good Sunday morning to you and welcome into Capitol View. I'm Jesse Tenor. We're just now over three weeks away from Election Day and this morning I'll talk to Attorney General Leslie Rutledge about her re-election campaign and the big issues. But we begin with some of the other big races statewide. Debate week just wrapped up at AETN, which means we got our first and only chance to see candidates face off this election cycle. Here are some of the highlights, starting with the hotly contested race for Arkansas's second district. The candidates hoping to serve Central Arkansas in Congress faced off in a debate Monday. As a U.S. representative, they would not be able to vote on Supreme Court nominees, but weighed in on the process to make Judge Brett Kavanaugh a justice. The American women witnessed a bad situation in the Kavanaugh hearings. I think Dr. Ford had a compelling case, but that case doesn't mean uh, that Brett Kavanaugh didn't deserve a fair hearing as well. But I think it's important for the message that we're sending to young men in this country as well. If we don't sufficiently investigate these allegations and what they might be able to get away with because they, they're led to believe that it's normal conduct when it absolutely is not. On the Trump administration's tariffs. It is having uh, uh, some negative residual effects on our farmers and we should be concerned about that. And his steel and aluminum tariffs across the board, I oppose. He knows I've opposed them. I have a different approach to that because that's hurting Tokusin right here in Conway and their manufacturing. And we can have trade agreements if we approach them in a thoughtful, deliberative, and multilateral way that provide a level playing field for American workers, for the environment that incentivize jobs here in America, but without the devastating effects on our farmers. The two candidates collided on the ballot measure before voters in November that would raise Arkansas's minimum wage to $11 an hour by 2021. And there are too many people right now who work full-time, sometimes more jobs than one, and still can't afford life's basic needs, still can't afford to put food on the table, buy the medicine that they need, and buy health care. Focus on getting training through our education system to get people more skills so that they have the ability to earn a higher wage based on their success and their productivity. We should be trying to get a maximum wage for all people. The candidates hoping to serve Arkansas as its Secretary of State faced off in a debate Wednesday. And it's all about giving voters a voice by drawing lines that are effective and reasonable and make sense and allow for participation for everyone. Democrat Susan Inman would allow an independent commission to handle redistricting, while Republican John Thurston would leave it in the hands of the Secretary of State, Governor and Attorney General. This will be the first time that Republicans have drawn the lines since Reconstruction. So. Why now and what is broken? On automatic voter registration. Why don't we just fly over the state and throw ballots all over the place and let people send them back? You still have to interact with an agency to become registered. This, it's not just everybody in the world is registered when they turn 18. Inman criticized her opponent, the current land commissioner, for buying a boat on the state's dime. And I leave that, to poor, that poor decision to what are you going to buy if you're secretary of state? Thurston argued the purchase was necessary. But for her to go up there and make, uh, insinuate that I have been fishing in it and personal use and blah, 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 you know, that's below the belt. And on Friday, the candidates for governor squared off in their final debate. They took on education, prison reform, and what they think should be the appropriate response to Trump's tariffs. On the issue of health care, Asa Hutchinson and Jared Henderson drew stark contrasts in their stance on the state's work requirement for Medicaid beneficiaries. The work requirement is a, a way to not only balance compassion with responsibility, but it's also for those able-bodied people without dependent children at home, a means for them to get more training, to be able to find access to a job, and that's what we want to do. We don't want to leave them in generations of poverty. We want to assist them with health care, but also to get the training necessary to work. I am all for able-bodied people working and doing their part, but I think that access to health insurance is an enabler of that, not an inhibitor. And I also know that beyond the harm that we can do when we deprive some of our most vulnerable citizens of access to health insurance, it goes beyond just their own welfare. 
On the issue of corruption in the state legislature, Henderson pointed out that while scandals are not Governor Hutchinson's fault, he still slammed the governor, saying he hasn't done enough to prevent powerful people from abusing their positions of authority. Governor Hutchinson called for strengthening ethics and campaign finance laws, noting that some of these scandals began before he took office and have crossed party lines and administrations. And coming up after a quick break, Attorney General Leslie Rutledge joins me in studio to discuss prosecuting corrupt state officials, her involvement in a lawsuit over the Affordable Care Act, and much more. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Monday on The Voice. This is it. The final night of the blind auditions. Yeah! And the gloves are coming off. I'm no dummy. Well. <laughs> then, America can't wait for more of TV's number one new show, Manifest. Maybe she knows how the plane disappeared. Get ready oh my God. for a bombshell. It's a stole. We don't need to wait. New Manifest, after The Voice, Monday on NBC. Time was, French Hill at least pretended he's one of us. But things change when politicians get to Washington. As congressman, French Hill votes like a D.C. insider. For the insurance companies, he voted to deny protections for pre-existing conditions. For the rich, a tax bill benefiting millionaires, millionaires like French Hill. And he voted for more debt that threatens cuts to Medicare and Social Security. So take a look at French Hill now. He's changed. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. A lot of people don't know that we're a family-owned jewelry store, but Cecil's has been here since 1975, and we have worked very hard to keep this reputation alive and well and build upon it. Looking for the guaranteed lowest prices on quality furniture? Come see us during FFO Homes Grand Opening Savings Celebration. Rocker Recliner, just $198. Get a five-piece dining room, only $398. Farn Door TV Center, only $498. Enter to win $20,000 in furniture giveaways. The lowest prices, guaranteed. During FFO Homes 13-store Grand Opening Savings Celebration. Don't miss it. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. With just a few weeks left until Election Day, we're hearing from the candidates at the top of the ballot. Joining me this morning is Republican Attorney General Leslie Rutledge seeking her second term in office. Good morning. Thanks for joining Good us morning. back. Thank you, Jesse. Glad to be here with you. Yeah, we appreciate it. So first off, I wanted to get into this. So you say that you're running on your record. So what specifically mm -hmm. should voters think about at the polls when it comes to what you have done as not only the first woman, but the first Republican Attorney General for Arkansas? Absolutely. And that's I, I want Arkansans to look at my record as Attorney General over the last three and a half years, going after criminals, con artists, and overreaching federal government, holding criminals accountable, making Arkansas more safe by ensuring that justice is carried out, that we uphold those lawful convictions of individuals, going after con artists, like the people that make those phone calls, uh, bad businesses, suing the opioid manufacturers, going after car dealers who have harmed our Kansans. We've had some big car cases uh, lately where we have gotten over $500,000 uh, judgments against bad car dealers, but also going uh, regulation that have harmed Arkansans to, to the point where they've either had to shut down their business because it's cost prohibitive to, uh, to be in compliance with these out of control federal regulations and, and we've stopped some of those in lawsuits. But I also want folks to look at the, the numbers of what we've accomplished at the Attorney General's office. In my three, first three and a half years as the Attorney General, we've had more Medicaid fraud convictions than the prior 16 years combined. That's how aggressively I'm focused on going after the bad guys. And then going off of that, your Medicaid fraud division has, of course, played a big part in the investigations involved with um, preferred family health care. And you've said that the division has been investigating more lawmakers. Is there any update that you can give us to that? I know you can't say a whole lot. Well, that's right. Uh, the Medicaid fraud control unit, the attorney general's office, we have... Uh, investigated, gone through over two million documents as it relates to preferred family health care. I, I have stated publicly that we are investigating former and current legislators as part of the investigation. And we are going to keep going uh, after individuals that uh, violate the law in any form or fashion. Uh, to date, with regard to preferred family health care, we've made three major arrests uh, from uh, individuals who 
everything from a billing clerk to others who were in charge of the compliance at Preferred Family Health Care. Uh, Two million dollars worth of fraud that these folks committed, and that's why uh, my office has been committed to going after them, holding them accountable, because that's taxpayer money that's being taken out of the system, fraudulently taken from our Kansans. One of the other things that you've been proud of, too, is some of the involvement in federal lawsuits, but at the same time, that's what your Democratic opponent kind of keeps um, calling you out on. He's saying that it's a distraction with some other motives at its roots. And so, first off, um, that he was saying that that's especially when it comes to the one in Texas that's trying to overturn the Affordable Care Act. And so, uh, what's your response to those claims from his side? Well, our rights as Arkansans, our rights under the Arkansas Constitution, but more importantly, our rights under the U.S. Constitution do not end at our state line. So we must be involved, and Arkansas must be involved in lawsuits uh, where our rights are being infringed upon or where we have seen the federal government overreach, uh, as it did in the EPA's uh, Waters of the U.S. rule, the Department of Labor's overtime rule. Uh, those are two cases, uh, examples, where Arkansas is part of those lawsuits, but it's a, it's a federal lawsuit. I'm suing the federal government, for example. The Affordable Care Act case, uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, we're asking that it be deemed unconstitutional based on the Republican-controlled Congress eliminating the, the tax penalty for the individual mandate. That is what Chief Justice John Roberts upheld the Affordable Care Act as a whole, uh, the previous decision. So we want to you know, make sure that our Kansans are always represented. Our religious liberty rights, we've been involved in some very important cases for our time with regard to religious liberty. If religious liberty is going to be trounced upon or your First Amendment rights of any nature are going to be trounced upon in another state, well, guess what? It can happen right here in Arkansas. And I am committed to make sure our Kansans are protected, uh, whether it's here in Arkansas or across the United States. Sticking to the Obamacare lawsuit really quick, some are arguing, you know, why, why fight something that's working here in Arkansas? And just an example of that, so there was a study from the University of North Carolina. It shows that a map, and it shows that we've seen neighboring states who have been forced to close rural hospitals since 2010 because they didn't expand their Medicaid. But there's nothing shown in Arkansas for us having to close hospitals because we did. And so what would your argument be to that? Well, my focus is on, you know, absolutely, I want our Kansans uh, ac across the state, particularly in rural Arkansas, to have access to health care and to make sure that doctors are able to come into Arkansas and it not be cost prohibitive for them to do so uh, for fear of, you know, liberal trial lawyers uh, suing them. However, the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional, and that's why we're going back to the court. The Eventually, it'll, I'm sure, go up to the U.S. Supreme Court asking that they deem it unconstitutional. I've spoken to Governor, Governor Hutchison about this lawsuit uh, before we filed it. Uh, Arkansas did what we had to do to make the best of a bad situation when it comes to Arkansas Works. And you know we want to make sure our Kansans are taken care of, but we also want to make sure that Congress and the federal administration uh, adhere to the rule of law. Do you think that our Kansans will have to prepare for that SCOTUS decision to come down? Do you think that they will end up overturning it? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but that's what we're asking them to do is to uh, to overturn uh, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, but then we've got to put pressure on Congress. Uh, Congress uh, had taken this up last year. It's time for them to, to revisit it and get serious about uh, reforming health care. And then um, on the note of SCOTUS, I wanted to ask you about now Justice Brett mm -hmm. Kavanaugh. Sure. And so um, during the confirmation hearings, you remain supportive of him, so we won't go back into the past, but I kind of wanted to look okay. toward the future. So how do you expect what Arkansans watched on TV to affect the state's elections? Just at some stuff this past week, it, there was talk that, you know, this could be better or worse for Republicans or Democrats, depending on what district you're in in Arkansas, what part of mm -hmm. the state you hope to serve. So how do you see all of that playing out? Well, I actually think of what the Democratic senators tried to pull with regard to uh, now Justice Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation has backfired on them. Uh, people are very frustrated and they're very disappointed in what they saw in Washington, D.C. during that entire process. It was very disappointing to see uh, U.S. senators bringing up information that was not relevant, making claims that were not accurate, and it was a, just a sad discourse. And people are tired of that. But what I've heard are that people are energized now. They said, we are going to get out and vote. You know, we were not excited about this election until uh, we saw what happened in Washington, D.C. and Justice Kavanaugh's hearing.
So it could end up impacting some of the elections maybe more than we thought, I guess. I think so. I think people are, they made sure they're registered to vote. They went and got more people registered to vote uh, right here in the second district. I am confident that Congressman French Hill is going to be reelected. But, you know, I'm focused on my reelection campaign. And, and so we've been going, traveling all across Arkansas. And as I've talked to people, they are extraordinarily excited because, and that's why they were excited about President Trump's election, is because they knew that he would have the opportunity to appoint uh, conservative justices who would adhere to the Constitution and the rule of law. That's why I was very supportive of President Trump uh, during the 2016 election. We saw that the president has stuck to his word and he's appointed two U.S. Supreme Court justices uh, who are going to be incredible members of the court and one already is. Uh, well, they both now are members of the court, but in terms of the rulings that we see from them adhering to the rule of law. All right. Well, hey, we'll talk more about the elections in just a second, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll have more with Attorney General Leslie Rutledge right when we come back. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Worldwide Weapons presents Harvest Fest at Carter Off Road Park October 25th through the 28th. Over 1,000 acres of hill climbing, mud bogging, camping, plus music by Haystack, Tragically White, and Static. Don't miss sale. Mega Jump. Get your tickets today at CarterOffRoadPark.com. Hey, no, I'm, I'm driving Dad to the hospital. He was just playing with Emma and he hit his head, but then he wouldn't stop bleeding and he got dizzy. Right, the blood thinner for um, AFib. How you doing, Dad? I'll be okay. Listen, we're pulling in. I'm going to call you back. This is the third time he's been admitted with a serious bleed. Is this blood thinner really helping him? I understand your concern. Your father's atrial fibrillation increases his risk for stroke. This is why you're on warfarin. But there is an alternative. Another pill? No, it's called Watchman. Watchman is a permanent implant that reduces the risk of strokes. In a clinical trial, 9 out of 10 people who received Watchman stopped taking warfarin in 45 days. There are risks associated with the Watchman implant, including internal bleeding, stroke, and in rare cases, it can be fatal. Talk to your cardiologist so that you thoroughly understand all the benefits and risks to see if Watchman is right for you. Learn more at Watchman.com. Volunteer sports coaches give their time to impact our children's future. They teach valuable lessons like teamwork, team discipline, and accountability. Coaches are role models and difference makers. Subway restaurants, Fox 16, and KRK want to recognize you sports coaches in our area through the Standout Coach Contest. Nominate your standout coach and they could win a $500 Subway gift card plus Subway catering for the whole team. Also, the first 25 nominated coaches will each receive a $50 gift card. Visit fox16.com or kark.com for details. Come and enjoy a new experience in shopping for your home. At Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor, we have over 5,000 rugs in the latest colors and styles. Bring your pillows, your pillow shams, and sizes. We will help you select the perfect rug. We're number one in customer service with 15,000 square feet of rugs, unique home decor, wallpaper, and flooring. Remember, buy today, take it home today, and save. Why wait? Worldwide Weapons presents Harvest Fest at Carter Off Road Park October 25th through the 28th. Over 1,000 acres of hill climbing, mud bogging, camping, plus music by Haystack, Tragically White, and Static. Don't miss sale. Mega Jump. Get your tickets today at CarterOffRoadPark.com. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capitol View. We are back with Attorney General Leslie Rutledge. So I wanted to dive into some of the issues that came up during the AETN debate week this past sure. week. Um, one of the things that was mentioned several times in different topics was different things that you would work on in, with the legislature in 2019. I know you don't feed them legislative packages or anything like that. You just kind of try to advise them mm -hmm. as best as possible. But one of the things that came up was with sovereign immunity. So moving forward, what would you like to see the legislature do here when it comes to Arkansans being able to sue the state? Right. And sovereign immunity came up after a decision called the Andrews decision at the mm -hmm. Arkansas Supreme Court. It has caused some concern and angst. Uh, my job as the Attorney General is to, to advise uh, state agency boards and commissions. Uh, we've had tons of questions coming into the legal team at the AG's office about how to handle uh, situations with uh, the Andrews decision in, uh, in place. As we look at the 2019 legislative session, uh, we are going to be talking to legislators about how we clean, clean this up so that way uh, it's clear what Arkansans can and cannot do um, in terms of the state government, uh, whether or not they, they can sue, how that applies to them. But it's going to take a lot of time uh, between now and uh, the session to, to work through those, you know, those scenarios that 
uh, any of the legislation they put forward. And then um, you've also um, been criticized for rejecting 70 ballot initiatives in a row over the past two years. Um, some of them have then sued your office and then got on the November ballot this time around. But you also said that you would work with the legislature to just make sure that Arkansans have kind of a more clear and fair way to get on the ballot because you were saying that a lot of times these were kind of incoherent. They are, and I, the vast majority of the 70 uh, ballot titles that I rejected, uh, most of them uh, are not coherent and they have no business uh, being on the ballot, much less being in our Arkansas state constitution. Uh, my role as the attorney general is just to look and see whether or not it's clear. In 2016, the Arkansas Supreme Court really muddied the water in terms of what is and is not clear for ballot titles, and they rejected two that I had previously approved. And so there is a much higher standard that was set by the court in 2016. Here we are in 2018, and, and that's part of the, the process, but what's frustrating to most Arkans is a couple of things. One, there should be a clear and fair process to have things put on the ballot. It should be clear and fair so that way after someone has spent all the time, money, and resources to get language on the ballot, after they've collected the signatures, after they've spent money to advocate pro or against an issue, it ought to stay on the ballot. However, here we are in October, going into a November 6th election, not knowing yet whether some matters will or will not be on the ballot. And so that's, I want the process to be clear and fair for all our Kansans to, to be able to exercise their right to vote, to know what's going to be on the ballot. And we'll get to that in just a second. Mm -hmm. But lastly, mm -hmm. um, during the debate when executions came up, you mm -hmm. said that the state should also look at different methods, different protocols when it comes to the current lethal injection system that we have. You mentioned that another state recently used fentanyl. So mm -hmm. what would you like to see the legislature kind of hash out in these next coming months? Well, I do want, uh, with regard to uh, lethal injection, the death penalty in Arkansas, uh, it has been very difficult to obtain the drugs necessary to carry out these uh, lawful uh, sentences given to these individuals. So uh, I mentioned the state of Nebraska that had used fentanyl to carry out an execution. So we should look to other states and what they are doing, what courts uh, have upheld in other states, what the U.S. Supreme Court has upheld to ensure that Arkansas has the options necessary to carry these out. Uh, one of the most difficult things for uh, the state to do, not just in terms of the sheer volume of litigation, but also uh, talking to those family members of the victims. Every single time I would call and speak to family members and they would say to me, Jesse, you know, Leslie, this is the first time someone's really been fighting for, for us. This, you know, the first time I, I'm finally going to see justice carried out for my husband's uh, death. And this is, this is important that Arkansans have justice and that it's carried out. So I will be, we've already been talking to legislators, we'll continue to as we get into the session, but I want us to have a robust conversation about the options necessary to carry out these sentences. Speaking of some of these ballot initiatives, so the Arkansas Supreme Court just this past week did uphold the state's voter ID law and you were very supportive of that. Um, so now when voters go to the polls, they'll not only have to show their ID, but then they'll also be voting on a voter ID ballot measure, which is issue two. And so do you think that if issue two passes that all the legal battles we've been seeing over these years will finally be put to an end? Well, again, you know, I can't see into the future. Um, I would be surprised if the legal battles do end, but I do want to protect the integrity of the ballot, and that's why I'm glad that the Supreme Court upheld voter ID in Arkansas, because you can only imagine if you went to the polls and it said that someone had already voted for Jesse Tenor, how frustrated you would be that someone had already voted in your place. And those instances have happened across the United States. We don't want them to happen here in Arkansas. And so we must protect the integrity of the ballot box because that's how we are able to exercise our democracy. And I can think you know, of a lot of bad things, but something extremely frustrating for me would be to show up and someone have voted in my place. And then some of the things that have come up during this debate, especially the Secretary of State's one, just because that's what they deal with is a lot of the voter issues. I mean, does that happen though a lot in Arkansas? There doesn't seem to be like a clear, you know, this is how many times voter frauds happened or something. Well, it does happen and oftentimes uh, that's taken to a local prosecutor to prosecute voter fraud or after the fact, uh, whether or not they want to prosecute those individuals. You know, oftentimes it doesn't come out until, you know, after the election that someone has, you know, they've gotten frustrated, maybe they haven't reported it right then, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not uh, someone has voted, someone's voted illegally. But again, I think it's just important to be able to show that identification, that voter verification to say, this is who I am, I want to vote, and for that person to get that ballot. And that'd be the only time that that, that person uh, be able to vote. 
we can't have people voting multiple times. That's against the law, and so it's important that we protect it. And like you said, too, I mean, there's still ballot initiatives that voters may not even be able to vote on, and we really only have right. one week left for the Supreme Court to decide that, and that's... And, and ballots are already printed. Yeah. Uh, they've already been sent overseas to our brave men and women who serve in the armed forces, as well as to others who have requested uh, absentee ballots. Uh, those are going out, and so the ballots are already printed and ready to go. So they may still be on the ballot, but it may be removed from the ballot technically in that the votes will not count. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what the Arkansas Supreme Court decides on uh, a couple more issues. I know you don't like looking into the future, but any <laughs> any sort of way that you think that they'll decide on tort reform term limits and then minimum wage? You know, I, I have my, th my thoughts and uh, where some of the justices will, will come down on those issues, but uh, until we see it, I, I, until they hand down a decision, I really don't want to wait off into that because I, I don't want uh, us to skew their opinions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No, understand. You're the state's <laughs> top attorney, so you can't really get, get in on that too much. <laughs> well, it's, you know, we've, we've done so much at the Attorney General's office over the last three and a half years, and that's I really want our Kansans to know that they can continue reaching out to me at the Attorney General's office. I'm the only Leslie there, so I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, the consumer issues that we deal with, going after the bad actors, uh, talking about the opioid epidemic, all of these things people care about. All right, well, Leslie, thank you so much for coming on the show ahead of the elections. Thank you, Jesse. And stay with us. We're back to wrap it all up after this. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. When you need new floors and the best deal in the state, there's only one place. Georgia Carpet Mills, home of the waterproof, kid-proof, pet-proof, Cortex floors from U.S. Floors. Don't forget to ask about our 0% financing. Georgia Carpet Mills, the best-kept secret in flooring. Ah, solid, solid, solid. Daco General Contractors, Absolute Retirement Auction, Thursday, November 8th at 10 a.m. 4.4 acres on Highway 65 in Damascus. With an office building, two shops, and equipment canopy. And every piece of equipment will be sold, including John Deere tractors, backhoes, trucks, trailers, power tools, and much more. Everything selling regardless of price. Go to WilsonAuctioneers.com. Ah, uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. The Good Earth is not an ordinary garden store. It's a 13-acre playground for your inner child. Located on Cantrell Road in Little Rock, it's the perfect fall family outing within the city limits. The Good Earth Garden Center, where wonder grows. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And before we go, here's a face you have not seen on Capitol View in quite some time. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Capitol View's Aaron Nolan recently met with him on the set of his new show in Nashville. Huckabee says one of the biggest disappointments is watching the state legislature right now because of his hard work to stomp out similar capital corruption in his early days as governor. Those of us who were involved in the politics of Arkansas at that time probably thought, boy, I'm glad we're going to get rid of this. It'll never happen again. People will see that you eventually get caught. And so my heart was broken when I saw that there were people, some of whom I knew, uh, some of whom I had worked with when I was governor and they were in the legislature and some really surprised me. Timely, on a timely election note, he says that's why term limits are so important. You can see the interview with Governor Huckabee in its entirety, which includes his thoughts on a third presidential run right now in a web extra on krk.com. And that does it for today's show. Don't forget, you can now take Capital View on the go. Download the Capital View podcast wherever you get your podcasts. There you'll find each of the AETN debates that you can also listen to anytime. We're back with an all-new Capital View next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.